Hello everyone. Welcome to the YouTube channel Medicos Factory. So, we are going to start new subject with new outcoming and approach to a more lucid way of grasping concept. So, we will start surgery subject with topic called hernia. Clinically and therapeutically important in both aspects. Kindly use comment section to solve your doubts. Subscribe channel as more newer topics and subjects are going to add in channel. Also, clinical surgery will be taught separately associate with this topic. So, to master your clinical knowledge, do watch entire series. So, let's begin. So, first is introduction. What is hernia? Hernia means to bud or to protrude. To protrude means to stick out or coming out from the surface like this. Causing variation in anatomical structure. Another definition that is area of weakness or disruption of the fibromuscular tissue of the body wall. As the muscles get weak and as a result of it, area produced out or disrupts fibromuscular tissue lining abdominal wall. Often, hernia is also defined as an actual anatomical weakness or defect. Because the anatomical structure deviates from original position and hence it results in defect. 75 to 85 percent of abdominal wall hernias are growing hernias. That is also called inguinal hernia. 50% of males and 5% of females develop inguinal hernia. As we have seen, inguinal hernia is most common. Reason is simple because muscular anatomy in the inguinal region is weak and also due to the presence of natural weakness like deepening and cord structures. Indirect is more common than direct. Femoral is 7%, umbilical is 8.5%, others are 1.5%, excluding incisional hernia. In general, incisional hernia is next to inguinal hernia in occurrence, that is 50%. So when compared, we can say that incisional hernia are common next to inguinal hernia. Growing hernia is 25 times more common in men than women. Indirect inguinal hernia is commonest hernia in men and women. Femoral hernias are more common in females. So, ratio is 10 female out of 1 male. Umbilical and incisional hernias are also common in females. Etiology that means causes. Straining it means when excessive weight is applied. Lifting of heavy weight chronic cough, observed in tuberculosis, chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma, and emphysema, chronic constipation, habitual and rectal stricture. Rectal stricture means narrowing of anal canal, making it difficult to pass stool. So next is urinary causes. It is categorized in 
three types. First is old age, BPH, that is benign prostatic hyperplasia. That is enlargement of prostate associated with age and carcinoma prostate. Second thing, young age, when urethral lining forms scar and hole becomes narrow, making it difficult to pass urine, that is stricture urethra. And third is very young age, stemosis. Foreskin becomes tight, which can't be pulled back over the head of the penis and meatal stenosis condition in which opening at end of penis become narrow and last is obesity next is pregnancy and pelvic anatomy smoking ascites that means excessive abdominal fluid due to liver disease and next is appendixectomy through so McBurney's incision that is point which lies one third of distance along imaginary line between right anterior superior iliac spine and umbilicus between two point incision is made incision is made perpendicular to this line this incision site may injure the ilioinguinal nerve, causing right-sided direct inguinal hernia. An indirect inguinal hernia occurs in congenital preformed sac, that is, the remains of processus vaginalis, that is, peritoneal tunnel through which testes migrate from retroperitoneum towards scrotum during embryological development chances of presence of bilateral preformed sac is 60% another is familial collagen disorder that is brown belly syndrome brown belly syndrome is birth detect like overdevelopment of abdominal muscle causing skin of belly area to wrinkle like prone, undescended testicles and urinary tract problems. Another reason is acquired herniation is also probably due to collagen deficiency called as metastatic emphysema of thread. Now we discuss parts of hernia. Hernia comprises of sac and content. Sac is diverticulum of peritoneum with mouth, neck, body and fundus. Diverticulum is condition that occurs when small pouches or sac form and push outwards through weak spot in wall of colon. Neck is narrow in indirect sac but wide in direct sac. Body of the sac is thin in infants, children and indirect sac but is thick in direct and long standing hernia. Hernia without neck. Those hernias with larger mouth and leg neck. Example is direct hernia and incisional hernia. Next is hernia without sac. Example is epigastric hernia. It is protrusion of extra peritoneal pad of fat in abdominal area. Coverings of the sac are the layers of the abdominal wall through which the sac passes. Now we will discuss classification of hernia. So now we will discuss clinical classification. First is reducible hernia. Hernia gets reduced 
on its own or by the patient or by the surgeon. Intestine reduces with gurgling sound and it is difficult to reduce the first portion. Omentum is duffy and it is difficult to reduce the last portion. Expansive impulse that is expansion in size of lump or swelling on coughing. Second is irreducible hernia. Here, contents cannot be returned to the abdomen due to narrow neck, adhesions, and overcrowding. Irreducibility predisposes to strangulation. That is, blood supply to part of body is reduced or cut off. Third is obstructed hernia. It is an irreducible hernia with obstruction, but blood supply to the bowel is not interfered. It eventually leads to strangulation. Next is inflamed hernia. It is due to inflammation of the contents of the sac. Example is appendicitis and salpingitis. That is inflammation of fallopian tube caused by bacterial infection. Here, hernia is tender but not tense. Overlying skin is red and edematous. Next is occult hernia, that is inguinal hernia. Hernia swelling is clinically not detectable but presents with growing pain. There may not be any expansive impulse on coughing. Now, strangulated hernia. It is an irreducible hernia with obstruction to blood flow. The swelling is tense, tender with no impulse on coughing and with feature of intestinal obstruction. Features of intestinal obstruction may be absent in case of omentosil, Richard's hernia and Litter's hernia. You will learn all this type of hernia ahead in this session. Strangulation is the most serious complication of hernia. Most common strangulated hernia is indirect inguinal hernia. Highest rate of strangulation is seen in femoral hernia. Now another classification type 2. First is congenital. It occurs in preform, sac or defect. And acquired it resists the intra-abdominal pressure leading into weakening of the area like in direct inguinal hernia. Now we will see classification type 3 according to the contents omentosil and omentum. Enterocil in intestine, cystocil in urinary bladder, liters hernia in macus diverticulum, sliding hernia, richter's hernia, part of the bowel wall. Now we will see classification type 4 based on sites. Examples like inguinal hernia, lumbar hernia, femoral hernia, umbilical hernia and epigastric hernia. So this was all about basic introduction to hernia. In upcoming session, we will discuss various types of hernia in detail. So follow entire series to master your concept in surgery. Also dear medicals, different series on clinical surgery will be taught. So do subscribe channel for more such content. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day.